Hey, hi everyone. Nice to see you. And importantly, obviously, nice to be seen. So, what am I doing, you may be asking? Well, good question. I, uh, this is my secret wood stash that I, when I um, cut something up and make a project, these are my like off cuts, so I keep them because I can always reuse them because uh, it's good to recycle. So what I thought we'd do today is make some feather sticks because that's like a continuation of like our fire lighting because obviously um, it's always important to learn as many different skills in fire lighting as we can. So without further ado, I'm going to sort some of this out, cut it into suitable lengths and then we're going to play around with some feather sticks which is really cool and a, and a very important bushcraft skill. So catch you in a minute guys. What do we need then to make some feather sticks? Well, good feather sticks are made of obviously seasoned wood, um, i.e. it could be a dead standing, um, preferably dry, obviously, right in the centre. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit wet on the outside, because as long as it's dry in the middle there, it's fine. But as you can see from my secret stash, I've had this for a little while, so I thought I'd use it up just for this, So, which makes an ideal sort of project for it really. So what, I'm gonna, what I want to do then, I want to sort of split these out into quarters to start with and see what we got. Um, but the more you can split it out, the sort of, the better it is. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So we take our trusty knife, because we need to split these out. And if anybody remembers the video from this, we're going to use this today, because seeing that we're in my, my favorite wood spot. So I'm going to, Use my old mallet, and then I'm gonna obviously split these out using my knife. So what I want to do, obviously, stating the obvious, put it in the middle, get my mallet, okay, and then split them out again. Okay, so that's all we need, just split them like that. If it was a bigger bit, obviously, then you'd split it into um, much more manageable sizes, but you'll sort of get the idea when we start doing it, how sort of big you want your pieces of wood. But what we're looking for is almost knot free, because knots will cause us a problem when we need to go to do a, a shaving. But these are pretty good, actually. This is, uh, this is hazel, obviously. Willow's a really good one and pine's a really good one. I mean, there's many woods that you could use, but they're just a few of my favorites. I'll split this one again.
So that's, that's a really good one there. So we had that and then we had that. We could split that in half again, which I might do. Gives us more. So they don't need to be huge. See if I can split these out anymore. Okay, so we've got our feather sticks. Just talk about lengthwise, right? I prefer sort of almost hand to elbow length. That's the size I go for. And I don't know if you noticed, right, in bushcraft, a lot of things are measured off body parts. Thumb thickness, finger thickness, uh, arm thickness, arm, hand to elbow thickness or length. I mean, long length is our body length. Everything is generally measured to a body length of some sort and i do understand that people are different sizes but that just gives you a rough idea because you don't want these too short so what i normally do to start with and it's really important that we have a sharp knife for just stating the obvious reasons here i'm just going to hang that on there i don't know where it is right so the first thing to do is that you can put a platform down here because sometimes these move into the dirt and if we're lucky today it's actually quite dry so i'm just going to put some of these on the ground and you can use this as a platform if you want but if it's a really dry environment you don't obviously you always need this but this is just to support it so so i've got my stick here and i'll say importantly to have your knife sharp and if you haven't seen a knife sharpening video you don't know how to do it pop back quick and have a look at that one right now so what we're going to do is that we're going to take our knife obviously so so body position is that you want to be to the side because we're going to be working away from our body we don't want to be doing it there stating the obvious with the arteries in the inner leg there could be messy otherwise so what you want to do then, or this is how I do it, I normally grip the top like so, because you can see there's a triangle shape, and it generally is when you split them out. Everybody's got, or some people have got different ways of doing it. It pretty much you achieve the same purpose here. So all I do is stick that on the stick there on the ground. And what I do is I come down first, just get rid of these first top layers, and don't forget it doesn't matter if these fall off because we can save those. So now we've got a flat area and we're going to work off that ridge and that ridge. And all I do is I turn that. I don't normally turn the knife. I normally just turn the wood and keep the knife going down. Just lock your arm when you go down or, or whatever's comfortable really. So all I'm doing then is I'm going to start close to my fingers, obviously being careful. And I'm going to go down, I'll say really slowly. Yeah, one side. I say I'm not too worried if it pops off. I'm trying to make sure, see that scandy grinder, I'll make sure that that's sitting flat like that. Yeah, you don't want to be too deep or angry in this, it's going to cut in deep, and if you're out too much, it's just going to pull off those bits there. And the more you do this, obviously the easier it's going to get. Okay, and another really good tip See that one just popped off there, not too worried. If you hold the knife up at an angle like that, see how they curl one way? 
yeah and if I hold the knife down like that see how they'll curl the other way yeah so if I do that again see how it's curled right out there you got one this side and you got one that side okay that's if you want to do that that is that just gives you a rough idea how so by holding the blade level obviously the, the curl is going to go straight down See how I'm turning the wood, not the knife. Just keep going. See I've got a forehand grip on the knife there. Makes it quite controllable. Okay, so you're getting the idea of what we've got to achieve there. You've got some really small ones, some slightly thicker ones, all sort of curled out ones. Okay, now you can see this bit's thick and that bit's thick and I've taken out in the middle there because obviously I'm holding that there. Okay, I can go a little bit more. I'll probably just leave that one. Well, what I want to do, okay, we're lucky today. It seems that it's not wet, but what I'm going to do, what I normally do is I build a little platform like that and I just stick them on there, keep them off the ground like that. And that should stop them getting damp. Because it doesn't matter if this side, the outside gets damp. I mean, if that's slightly damp, but that's bone dry, that's, that's, that's fine. So again, same thing applies. Start at the top. Make sure you're comfortable. First one down, okay, and then go either side. You're an owl. Tawny owl. Okay, so that's another one. That's pretty good. See all the curls on that. Awesome. Almost like a piece of art. Some people actually spray these and use them as a decorative design. Obviously, they take them off. So if you can spray them up and make it artsy, fair enough. But what you could do also, you can break these off here. If you don't want that on there, like for example, you just break that there, right? And then you got you can have just that, which is quite cool. So you can save those for later, and you can use this as a kindling. So it's pretty cool. feather sticks all curled up and looking really nice so we've done quite a few of these but I'll show you how to lay them and then I'll show you how to burn a couple several different ways so what we want to do is good practice obviously is we lay our platform for our fire 
That's our base, obviously, because we keep our fire off the floor. Obviously, give it a fighting chance. Because, obviously, the floor is either damp, cold or other. So, with these, you just literally, when you lay them, you lay them literally crisscross like that. One on top of the other, one on top of the other. Okay. I mean, you probably leave four, six. Okay, I've got quite a few spare here, so you can keep laying them on top. So, the idea is to go in and, obviously... We just can light them, but what I do, I won't light them because I want to save that for later. But what we want to do, literally, I'll show you how easy that is. Just light that up, and that just consumes itself like that. And that's how quickly they light up. And like I say, that's a pretty good technique in my eyes. Okay, but on one on its own, as you can see, it burned pretty quickly. Okay, it's still going. So let's just shake that one out. So what we do then, obviously, just stated the obvious, put four on there. Okay, light from the bottom. Obviously, if we have a fire, all we need to do then is just make sure we've got our other tinder and kindling ready, and then that's how that lights up pretty quickly and easily like that. Just consumes itself. So start at the bottom, and obviously it makes its way up. So another way that I use to light these up, which is slightly a little bit more difficult, we're going to use the old uh, fire steel here, but what you need to do, the secret in this one, is that you need to make really small shavings, really fine, really fine, super fine almost, because they've got to take a really, got to take the spark. Okay, so that's probably good enough. See that that catches and then hence it catches the rest of it. So what I normally do is I'll just put that flat on the ground like so. I normally put my foot on it to stop it moving. And then I put this sort of on the edge there. Because I want the sparks to sort of go in there and hopefully that up obviously to catch the rest of it and obviously we can add that you know to uh we can add another one and keep going and keep going and keep going but that gives you a rough idea it is a lot harder with the uh, spark oh let's go in there look so might as well put that down there to finish the rest of them off. And there's our little one from earlier. Stick that on the top there. And hey presto, we have a fire. So there you have it, feather sticks. It's as easy as that, but it does take practice to get um, some nice curls like that. Um, just a couple of points to remember. Dead standing, obviously it's no good taking green wet stuff. Um, best woods to try are either willow, hazel, which this is of course, and pine. Pine's a good one. Um, you need to have a sharp knife, obviously. I mean that is one of the most important things. But by learning this 
um, skill, which I said at, said at the beginning of the video is a quite an important, if not very important skill to learn in bushcraft, because you can even light your home fires with these, you can uh, wood burn in stoves, um, and these are really, really good, obviously when it's in a wet environment and that's all there is to light, and this stuff lights really well. So you need to get out there and do some bushcraft and do some of these, because that is the only way Obviously you're gonna learn this stuff and this is really, really, I can't emphasize how important it is to get these down. I mean, it doesn't matter if the bits break off, it doesn't matter. So with that said, so if you like the video, obviously up like, leave a comment, because it's always nice to have a chat with you guys. Um, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed, that really does help me out. And um, have a lovely weekend or have a lovely week, wherever you're doing, wherever you are, I'll catch you around. using the side bends look. Yeah.